Hey folks, Ray from DCGrammarca.com here. Today I'm going to show you off Garmin's newest announcement from last week at the Ant Plus Symposium, which is Running Power. Uh, now, of course, Running Power has been something that's been talked about for a, a number of years now. Different companies, Stride being one of them. Um, and now it's something that Garmin's getting into themselves with their new Running Power app. Now, I want to caution first, this app is not yet available. It's coming out in November, uh, and it's going to be free and all that jazz. But just so you can't find it today, again, not yet today. It's not there, um, but it will be there soon. The way it works is though, you have a Connect IQ capable watch. Uh, so first you can have that piece. The next piece though is it is going to require a watch that has a barometric optimeter in it. Uh, so that is going to be something like the Vivo Active HR, the Vivo Active 3, the 935, but not things like the Garmin 735 that does not have an optimeter unfortunately in it, nor the Garmin 230 or 235, both of which do have Connect IQ in them, but not an optimeter. The next thing you're going to need though is a running dynamics strap or pod. Uh, so if you have, for example, the Garmin HR HRM run or HRM try straps those will work even the ones that are you know like two years old three years old no problem from a running dynamic standpoint on top of that you could also use the new RD pod that came out this past uh, spring so if you have those little doohickey right there it's the RD pod that'll work as well and the reason they need that is they need the vertical oscillation component that comes from either those straps or those pods and it's the same with stride as well um, by the way that's totally normal the boats come by every uh, 5 to 15 minutes um, also totally normal here in Paris is you'll hear the music in the background and you'll even see the fashion models up on the bridge right there uh, shoot for snow right now so again just another every day in, in Paris um, anyways as I was saying you need those accessories um, for the additional metrics that are required to calculate running power uh, and that's happening via the new Connect IQ app that Garmin is releasing for those platforms I mentioned earlier all of which is free except for of course the sensors and stuff that you have to buy so we're gonna go out for a run I'm just gonna show you what those differences are this is actually the second run I've done the first one is on a mountain up in Canada and I'm gonna start right now with that so here we are halfway up the mountain or I really hope halfway up the mountain um, my wattage right now is 570, 600 watts on this thing. Uh, so on average, and I'm not talking to you, I'm um, going up here, it's about 400 watts, which I can't talk at the same time, which is more than I'm getting on stride by a fair bit, in fact. And one second, as I was saying, it's more than I'm getting on stride. That's something that Garmin expected beforehand, they said to be aware that users will probably find their power numbers higher on the Garmin app than on Stride. They, of course, believe that their numbers are accurate. Stride, of course, believes their numbers are accurate. Everyone believes their numbers are accurate. And the dirty little secret is no one actually knows for certain uh, because of the fact that you can certainly test some of this indoor on force feedback or force plate treadmills, but you can't test it out here. You can't test it with elevation, with a known, a known good, a known way to measure running power. So it's all somewhat relative. The good news there, if anything, is that it is somewhat all relative and that it tends to be consistently high or consistently low, depending on what you're doing. So you could potentially use it to train. Now, as I often talk about in the running or the cycling power meter side, that's kind of a lame ass excuse because if you go to switch vendors down the road, then all your power numbers go out the window. And so it's sort of tough and it's kind of where the technology is right now. The cool part though, at least with this, is that a lot of people already have HRM run, HRM try, RD pod stuff. So it's no skin off your back, nothing out of your wallet to go ahead and hook it up as a Connect IQ app and see how it works. Let's uh, keep on going up to the top. So just to look at stride for a second, here we are. It's hovering generally below 300, depending on the angle. So <clears throat> there we are. 300 right there, 313. A little above is a little steeper right here, 309. So you're talking 100 to 150 watts lower than Garmin's calculations. We are at the top. Uh, I was at 7,300 something other feet just up there, but uh, there were too many tourists up there to talk. So um, overall, you know, it worked from a power standpoint, heading up. Uh, both sides worked, of course, the question is which one was correct, and that's something that we really don't know. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and head back down. That's gonna be kind of the sucky part, um, like really sucky. And then uh, we'll look at the data afterwards once I get back down. It's very, very, very tempting. Down we go. So interesting tidbit as I'm running down here now, the 
power values have actually flipped between the two units where the Garmin is lower and Stride is higher. Now it's been interesting with the reversals, it actually depends on the steepness of the grade. So I found that on the really steep stuff, it's definitely reversed. Whereas on the little bit flatter stuff like right here, they're closer or back to what they were before where the Garmin is higher again. Um, so I don't really know why, um, but I can kind of guess. I think that's to do with vertical oscillation and how each unit is measuring it, which keep in mind, they are measuring in different spots here. So Stride is on my foot down there, whereas the RD pod is on the back of my running shorts somewhere back there. So, you know, there's gonna be slight differences there, just like there's slight differences in cycling power between a pedal weight power meter and a crank or even uh, back of the hub, like a power tab hub or something like that. Anyways, I thought you'd find that interesting. Also, my legs are already. Also, uh, I'm gone down about two miles so far. I got another roughly mile to go. And uh, yeah, it's really gonna suck tomorrow. Okay, now that we're back from Canada, we're gonna head out in the flats here and look at power, what it looks like on this flat run, uh, a couple of intervals and stuff like that, and just to mix things up, and then we'll go inside and look at all the data. So here as we cruise along the flat, the Garmin running power is about 475, whereas the stride power is at 308, uh, 284, 290. Again, Garmin power, so we get the right buttons eventually, 460, 435, 410, so, 450. As you can see, that's quite a difference between those power numbers, just like we saw up on the mountain there. Pretty significant difference. Here we are into the run of ways, uh, and no real change in terms of the power disparity that we see that we see between the two. So if I look right now, I'm at 615 and 610 a mile on the Garmin at 535 watts. Slowing down a little bit here as I go up a hill. So 322. 323 on stride so it's been pretty constant like this generally about 100 to 150 watt gap uh, you saw a bit more there because i was just at the exact bottom of the hill there so i wouldn't focus on that too much but what you see is the fact that it's usually 100 to 150 watts between the two which again we don't really know who is right or who is wrong and ultimately that's part of the problem here is that yes there is some science behind some of the indoor aspects of power meter running or running power meters however you want to phrase that but when it goes to outdoors it's a bit trickier like I'm getting a bit of a headwind right here that you can hear and the stride we know it doesn't account for that either way there's no gold standard to compare that against so you sort of just hope for the best but at the end of the day there's 185 watts of difference between them so how do you know which one to trust in longer term how do you change between devices if they are indeed different Fashion model shoots in Paris. Just saying. Okay, folks, here we are inside. Now I'm gonna tell you right away, it's gonna be a bit tricky to show this to you. And this is mostly because of the fact that I don't have live access to the data because it's still considered like a Garmin beta thing. So I've only got a crap ton of screenshots of each one of the runs and I can show you what the stride data looks like live. Uh, so the first thing to look at here is this is kind of the all charts that you would normally see at the end of your run on Garmin Connect. Uh, so these are all the different metrics there. And then down at the bottom here, we do have the running power one. So it's a very last one there uh, in purple and you can see it along the bottom just like you would all the rest of your metrics normally atop uh, Garmin Connect on the Garmin platform there. Um, that's true if I look at other stats as well. So here if we zoom in on this one, it's a little bit easier to see here and again I get this is kind of difficult or kind of tricky still, um, but you can see running power up here on the top, but note down here uh, you see Connect IQ, and that's the Connect IQ data field, uh, basically showing that running average power, and then also the run power, which is the name of the app uh, version there. Uh, and then you see over here, running dynamics coming from the running pod, the RD pod there, and of course up here at the top, the running power. Uh, now we can go ahead and look at some of the overlays onto different charts. Uh, so for example, I'm gonna pull up this one right here, which should be uh, pace and elevation and running power. So in the background here, what you've got is running power. So this is the, uh, the gray piece right there. And then the blue line is my pace. And then the green line here is elevation. So that's, you know, of course the mountain going up there. You can see right here uh, as running power, you know, there's definitely a, a correlation between pace 
and running power itself. Um, but it's not as visible in some cases here because of the fact that uh, I am going so darn slow. You know, the difference between walk and run uh, when I get close to the very, very top here uh, is somewhat similar because it's again pretty slow. Uh, but certainly as I go back down, uh, you can see in the gray right there, the running power staying in the Garmin case between two and 300 watts in most, most portions of the run. Uh, and the pace is pretty consistent. Whereas going up right here, you see, for example, this area, um, you know, the running power is roughly between four and 500 watts for a lot of it in the gray in the background uh, as I'm running. And then points where I, you know, slow down and walk like right there, uh, you can see the pace drops down, the running power drops down about 150 or so watts. Um, now to compare that real quick, over on Stride, here is Garmin Connect, of course, live because Stride is live already. Uh, you can see the same sort of chart right here. If I overlay power with pace, um, this exact same moment right there, uh, you can see it drop down much, much lower, you know, 100 uh, watts and below 100 watts as I go down to actually uh, being stopped right there. Uh, and then, then the power up top of the pace right there is pretty low as well, kind of just walking and, and stopping and whatnot. So, um, and if you look throughout the rest of it here, if I reset that zoom, sorry about that, uh, you can see, of course, over the top here that, you know, it's pretty consistent, just like the Garmin was, just a lot lower. So instead of being 400 to 500 watts, I'm at, you know, roughly 300 or so watts uh, throughout that entire climb right there. And then coming down the hill, I'm below 200 watts uh, all the way down for the most part versus the Garmin. I was again a bit higher uh, as you saw back on that previous slide. So let's look at the 5k run real quick here, uh, the one in the flats. So I'm going to pull up this chart right there. And uh, in this chart here you can see again running power is in purple, elevation perfectly flat more or less uh, in gray. And then my pace. My pace is very, very constant for the most part. I mean, it's still a bit wobbly, but it's kind of moving along. Uh, and then you can see here, running power is definitely reacting very, very quickly throughout this. Now, whether or not that's accurately reacting or it's just simply being overactive is a bit of a tougher question. Uh, if we look at stride, on the other hand, we'll see that it's very, very similar in a lot of ways. We go down the bottom here. Uh, there's power right there. I'm going to put pace on top of this. Um, and you can see that you know, stride is definitely a bit tighter across this. It's stride is uh, the running power is down in gray right there. My pace up top, pace is identical by the way in both of them. It's using GPS for both of them. Uh, and in this case, you can see though that, you know, it's definitely a bit more smooth on the stride standpoint and it's also a lot lower. It's that 300 watts or so throughout this as opposed to the 400 to 500 watts for Garmin. Uh, but again, we don't really know which one is right. There is no way to know which one of these two is right outdoors. There's no technology out there today to be able to say which one is absolutely right. Both companies claim they're right. Both companies claim they have scientific backing for their algorithms and, and whatnot. Uh, so it's really kind of up to you to decide which one is right. Obviously, you know, it's a little bit easier if your running power matches your cycling power, which happens to be the case for me with Stride, um, because mentally I can understand that, but that's just like a bit of a mental crutch. There's no basis for that best I can tell as to why that should be correct versus Garmin side of things. By the way, all these graphs and all these charts are down in that link you see in the description field there. You can download them, you can look at them, you can analyze them, and there's tons more data on my post about this uh, in that description as well. Um, kind of what Garmin's doing there, why they did what they did in terms of Connect IQ, some of the limitations I didn't really cover in the video. Uh, so definitely check that out. With that, thanks for watching. Go ahead and watch that like button down below as well as the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And again, remember this stuff is not coming out until late uh, November. So you will not see it today on the Garmin Connect IQ store. Uh, you have to wait until I believe November 17th or 20th or sometime in that time frame to check it all out. Have a good one.